and a welding process. Next topic is resistance welding. The heat which is required for melting and joining the plates is obtained from electrical resistance circuit then it is called as resistance welding. Resistance welding is also called as fusion pressure welding process. See, uh, if you see my before videos, I would have written the resistance welding in non-fusion welding process. But the resistance welding process is also called as fusion pressure welding process. I'll tell you why, okay? We know that fusion welding process means when the parent metal is melted and welded by the application of heat. When heat is applied to melt and weld the parent material, then it is called as fusion welding process. Pressure welding is when the force is applied to them. When the pressure force is applied for welding, then it is called as pressure welding process. So in the in the in the resistance welding, here we are applying pressure, that is force. Force is applied on both sides of the electrode as well as here the parent metal, here the parent metal is melted and welded. So only we are calling the resistance welding as fusion pressure welding process. Fusion is the parent metal is melted by the application of heat and the pressure is also applied on the on a both ends of the electrode. So the resistance welding is also called as fusion pressure welding process. Okay. In the resistance welding process, we are using four contacting resistors R1, R2, R3 and R4. R1 is the contact resistance of this electrode, okay? non-consumable electrode. Okay? I will tell you a relationship between resistance and heat generator. If the, if the resistance is very high, then the heat generation will also be high. So, R1 value should be as low as possible so that heat generation and, and the electrode will be very less. Okay? So, for this we are using copper tungsten or copper tungsten alloy materials for making the electrode because these materials have a very low electrical resistivity. Okay? These materials have a very low electrical resistivity and they are high strength. They are high strength as well as the melting point of copper and tungsten are very high. Because of these properties, electrode is made up of copper or copper tungsten alloy materials. Okay. Next comes to R2. R2 is the contacting resistance between the tip of the electrode and the workpiece. Okay. And uh, R2 value also depends upon roughness and cleanliness of the contacting surface. If the contacting surface is very clean and rough, if the contacting surface is very clean and rough, then the resistance value will be very high. If the contact surface is rough, then it leads to very high uh, resistivity and heat generation will also be high. But for us, this R2 value should be as low as possible because if the R2 value increases then the weld will be made here so R2 value should be as low as possible so for getting a very low R2 value we are using clean and smooth surface we are using clean and smooth surface next is R3 R3 is the contacting surface of the workpiece R3 is the contacting surface of workpiece this R3 value should be as low as possible. Okay? This R3 value should be as low as possible to avoid formation of well at very high thickness. If the R3 value is very high, then it will form well throughout the section. Okay? So R3 value should be as low as possible. Next is R4. R4 is the contacting surface between two workpieces, or it is also called as Spraying surface or contacting surface. It, it is also called as build B. Okay? R4 is the contacting surface between two work pieces. R4 value should be as high as possible. So it is rough and clean. R4, R4 should be very high for getting a resistance of high value. The contacting surface should be rough and it should be clean. Okay? And uh, 
have given all this thing in in a simple way the contacting resistance of R1, R2, R3 should be very low compared to R4 value R4 value should be very high compared to all, all three values okay so the total resistance is given by 2 into R1 plus R2 plus R3 then plus R4 okay 2 into R1 refers to we are using 2 electrodes here so 2 R1 R2 refers to we are using 2 contacting surface of this electrode and the plate so 2 R2 and 2 R3 is 2 workpiece and only one contacting surface between 2 workpiece that is R4 it is a well beat or fraying surface ok total resistance value should be around 200 to 500 micro ohms it should be 200 to 500 micro ohms and the time taken should be lesser than or equal to 0 0.2 seconds ok the temperature the maximum temperature produced at the joint is 9000 to 12000 degrees celsius it is very high actually so whatever we have seen till now it is a theory part ok for gate exam the questions are asked from this formula this formula are very important for solving problems in gate exam that is heat generated HG is heat generated it is given as I square R T where I is current in amps R is ohms see in most of the problems R value will be given in micro ohms we have to convert micro ohms to ohms we have to multiply into 10 power minus 6 ok and T is time taken for this welding operation T in time ok or it can be written as I square RT into efficiency I square RT into efficiency or it can also be written as VI efficiency by speed VI V is voltage I is current efficiency by speed this formula is very important ok this is formula number 8 ok and the next set of formula is we, we know that heat generation is directly proportional to I squared that is current if the current increases heat generation will also increase ok and heat generation is also directly proportional to thickness small t is thickness ok and we also know that heat generation is directly proportional to melting point of the metal ok so uh, we are taking first two relationship ok so I square is directly proportional to T because heat generation is directly proportional to I square as well as it is also directly proportional to T so I am taking T is directly proportional to I square so I am writing T1 by T2 is equal to I1 square by I2 square ok this is important same way I am taking these two relationship at one side I am taking I square to other side so heat generation is directly proportional to melting point into thickness as well as heat generation is directly proportional to I square so I1 square by I2 square is equal to melting point of 1 into T1 by melting point of 2 to T2 this is formula number 9 ok so these two formulas are very important for solving problems in gate exam ok especially this one heat generation Thank you.